Almost two years ago, I was watching the news and a segment came on in which the reporters were discussing a newly released report from the Veterans Affairs Administration from here on out, just referred to as the VA, that was addressing the issue of veteran suicides. And I watched this particular segment in anticipation, thinking to myself, finally, we're going to get more context on this issue than we've had so far up to this point. Finally, veterans like myself are going to be able to come out of the shadows and talk about this without the stigma that's normally attached with discussing such a very broad and uncomfortable issue. Finally, we were going to make headway in resolving this problem. And I was disappointed. The only thing that really came out of that particular segment was the number of veterans that were taking their lives on a daily basis. That is the only thing that has continued on through reports since. That statistic is that Every day, 22 veterans take their own lives. Since that first report, whenever they show this kind of issue on the news, they always present the following picture. They bring up spouses or parents of veterans my age discussing the loss. They have reporters discussing the only thing they think could possibly be bringing this issue and making it such a problem is war, PTSD, and associated military service. They even show stock footage of people in the military going through exercises, which technically does not make them veterans and therefore is a slightly different issue. This picture never changes. The rest of the report, the context within it that makes it a possibility for us to fix this issue left on the floor. Today, I'm gonna to present you guys with a few issues of context from that report so that we can broaden our minds in understanding this issue better. And at the end, I'm gonna provide you with a tool, a simple tool, but somewhat difficult one to actually use to actually help deal with this issue and help save lives. And I'm gonna start by presenting a story from my own life to set up these issues of context. As you heard before, I am a veteran. I served a little over seven years in the Army, including two tours to Iraq. That Seems like a lifetime ago, it certainly was a, probably about 50, 60 pounds ago. <laughs> Contrast that with this particular photo. That was taken at the end of February in 2009, after I'd been out of the Army for almost eight months. It was also taken about two weeks before I had my first suicidal episode and my only real significant suicide attempt. It was around spring break, I couldn't sleep, I'd had a bad night, and over time I became depressed. And as that depression got worse, a thought ended up bouncing on my head that a lot of people get that just bounces off that maybe it just might be easier to end it all. It stayed on the periphery until I had to go out later in the morning to get coffee because it's a Monday morning and I have stuff to do, like we all do. And I ended up coming to this crossing. And that idea that had been staying on the periphery of my brain suddenly came to its forefront, and I ended up starting to take a step with a city bus or a semi barreling down the road from the next stoplight. I was that close. As I was getting ready to complete that step and take another step so that I could finish this deed, all of my synapses suddenly came back on. I realized what was going on, and I managed to step back onto the curb before I ended up being the victim of a very quick, very tragic decision. For those of you at this point that are wondering what the context this story brings, it's that I survived, that I'm here to tell you about this story, and I'm not alone. All these graphs, by the way, are from that particular veteran report I spoke of earlier. This is the number of people that have called what's called the Veterans Crisis Line since 2009 up until the issue of that report talking about issues that are that problematic, most of the time suicide or associated mental health issues. I have no doubt that a lot of people were helped by those calls, but we can't say everybody. And this is where that issue of context is in, is that that statistic of 22 veterans a day only counts those people that were successful. They do not count those people that tried and failed at least until they make another attempt and are successful. That's just the first issue of context to think about. The next issue of context is going to be what we tend to associate with veteran suicide. And for those of you that have been watching the news at this issue, you might notice that when they're doing it, as I said, they're showing pictures of people my age. 
This report, though, shows a completely different picture. If you were to look, civilian suicides, you're more likely to commit suicide as non-veterans when you're younger. The difference for veterans is completely different. You're more likely to be more suicidal as you age. There's two groups here. One is just the general veterans community. The VHA veteran here are those that are actually getting treatment from the Veterans Administration. To kind of put this into context of those 22 a day, of them, 15 of them are over the age of 50. That's our parents, that's our grandparents. So we're talking Vietnam vets, Korean War vets, some World War II, but a lot of interwar periods. For those of you that might be wondering why, it, why my, the VHA numbers are a little bit higher than the general population, you could come up with two reasons. One, if you've been watching the news, the VA's been having a lot of problems, and it could be that this is one of them where they're failing to it. But another possible reason is that they are actually seeking treatment and they can get more accurate statistics on who is actually taking their lives. If this particular issue doesn't give you a bit of pause, hopefully this last one will, and it's how this report ended up being constructed. What was asked by the Veterans Administration was every state, plus Washington, D.C., and several other places in the world where veterans come and congregate and reside, to send their statistics on suicide rates just generally, but with a specific emphasis on veterans in particular. Of those places, which is about 57 or so, only 21 of them replied back in full. Now, that might be okay if there was an equal dispersion of the veterans population across the nation, but there isn't. The color of red in these states indicates states that either did not reply at all to the request by the Veterans Administration, or all of their reports on this issue of veteran suicide are still pending approval from the states. The one exception is Texas, and the reason for that is because Texas had incomplete information, but also because between Texas and California, approximately 15% of the veterans population resides in one of those two places alone. With not having complete data from either one of those places, you're talking about one in every seven veterans living there. The possibility that that statistic of 22 is accurate probably isn't the case. In fact, the LA Times, since that report was published, did a study within California to kind of get an idea of what their estimate was. Their estimate ended up being 27 a day. For those of you who think from these just three areas of context out of many, but these ones are particularly large, that this issue is insurmountable, I do have a tool for you that can help us address this issue, and it's actually a simple tool we have to start having open and honest discussions about the issue of suicide. Or more significantly, we can't stigmatize those who do. Suicide, for anybody that lives in the Western society, people know is a very taboo issue to talk about in general. There's a stigma that's carried with it by people who just even utter the word. But by doing so, by carrying that stigma, by keeping it there, the ability to actually help people understand what it is they're going through to get them off of that ledge, to get them off of that worst possible idea becomes more complicated. And in the case of veterans, it's even more so. So my challenge to you is to start having more open conversations about this issue, whether it's in the public or in the veterans community, because honestly, if that statistic of 22 is correct, it's simply too many. Thank you.